Welcome back. Well, it's been a long time coming, but there are now bank accounts outpacing inflation. So, what accounts are paying the most and what do we need to know? Today, Money Expert, Effie Zahos joins us now. Effie, good morning to you. Good Where morning. Where can you find these accounts? Well, there are more and more now that are actually outpacing inflation, at least the headline rate. So, we know inflation peaked in December at 7.8. There is no way you would have found a bank account mm -hmm. that was keeping up with that. So, your money's going backwards. Your purchasing power's going backwards. So, the good news is inflation figures last week came in at what? 5.4. Here you go. Here are some headline rates that are at least above that. Mm. Some of them come with conditions. So you got the first one there at 5.6 Rabobank. That's only for four months. ME, 5.55, so long as you play the game, and that is open a transaction account, put, uh, put probably your salary will go through there as well, 2,000, make it grow, then you get 5.55. If you're under 17, you don't have to do anything, just be young, that will get you that <laughs> rate. So you can see this is good news because at least it's keeping up with the cost of living, some of these accounts. Okay, now if you want to lock your money away, are there some yeah. good deals out there for that? Not as good as those ones. So a lot of people on a fixed income, seniors, pensioners, they like to use term deposits. The thing is, we've got the four major banks now, they've revised their actual cash rate forecast. They're all saying the rate will go up on Melbourne Cup Day. Mm. So if that's the case, the tip here with term deposits, play the game here in the sense that if you lock all your money in for one year and we've got a rising market still, there are going to be better rates out there. So take care if you're going to lock in for a long term because I would think that if rates do go up on Melbourne Cup, you'll get better if deals. you've got a fair bit in there, mm. so don't you have to worry about more tax? Yeah, this is the thing that we haven't, you know, worried about for such a long time. Yeah. The tax and our savings. Do you know there are some places where there are incentives, the government doesn't charge tax if you're actually genuinely saving. In Australia, we don't have any accounts like that. So this is something that you'll find when you do your tax return. Typically, you do not pay tax on your savings until you do your tax return. So the, the uh, tax experts here calculated some numbers. If you've got 10000 in savings at 5.55, you'll earn about $564 in interest. Now, depending on your income, let's say you're earning 70000 a year or if you're earning 150 as a household, that's how much extra tax you'd pay or your tax return will go down depending on your situation. So the government takes a nice chunk out of that. Half, mm. nearly. Well, yeah, the more you earn, the more you pay, but then, yeah... Definitely. Okay, impact on seniors? So a lot of seniors worry about this and think, oh, if I'm going to earn such a lot of interest, then will my pension go down? Because to get the pension, you've got to pass an asset test and an income test. The good news is, and I'm sure the government is kicking themselves that they did this, is that the <coughs> deeming rates are still frozen until June next year. So what this means is that no matter what interest rate you earn, the government only assumes that on the first, say, 60000 if you're single, it's 0.25. So it's not going going to impact your pension. You're not going to go over that threshold. You need a lot of money in that bank account to, to, to uh, feel the pain there. I understand. Good on you, Effie. Thank Thanks, you so Effie. much. Only 57 days until Christmas. Gift giving is just around the corner. But with the cost of living crisis still in front of many people's minds, a lot of parents out there are really feeling the pressure and the pinch. So how do we talk to our children about embracing a budget-friendly holiday season? Mm. Well, parenting expert Justin Coulson is live from the Sunshine Coast with some, vi some advice on that front this morning. Justin, good morning. While we don't want to, of course, ruin the magic and the spirit of Christmas, do we need kids to be be a bit more realistic? Yeah, materialism is what Christmas is so much about in the minds of our children. They just want to unwrap all those gifts and go crazy with all the good stuff that they can receive. I think the real question for parents needs to be, what does the magic of Christmas really mean? What are we trying to focus on? Because if we make it about materialism and fulfilling our children's every wish, then we probably need to be realistic with ourselves rather than with them and, and, and kind of get a grip on what we can accomplish. But I mean, the reality is some kids are going to be disappointed no matter what, even if they get everything under the tree. Uh, depending on their age, maybe some, some careful conversations could be helpful. So at what age do you start those careful conversations? Yeah, one of the things that um, kids get really hung up on, even from a young age, is whether their kids have got enough money mm. and whether they're going to be OK. Every now and again, I'll even hear it from my kids. They'll, they'll make a decision with financial considerations in mind, even when it's not even close to where my head is. I just wanted to have a great time. They're thinking that was going to cost mum and dad too much. Kids really filter their conversations and their desires, at least at some level, when they think that money is an issue. So we want to start to be sensitive around what we're saying about money. Now, money doesn't grow on trees, that kind of thing. 
from the time our kids are able to comprehend what we're saying and that's that's again why the the need for these careful conversations so if i'm talking to you know my almost four-year-old about this topic what would i say what's the kind of language to use with a really young child about limiting their expectations when it comes to gifts well, the great news, Sylvia, is when you're talking to a three or four or five year old, they're not so big on social comparison. They're not, they're not looking at what everyone else is getting and worrying about that. That doesn't really kick off until about seven, eight, nine, somewhere in there. But I think the best conversations to have, the ones where we really just sit down and explore their desires. Hey, what is it that you want for Christmas? Why do you want that? Why is it important to you? And we start to really explore that. Maybe then segue that conversation into a discussion where you explain how Christmas works at home. Our focus on Christmas is spending time together or having great food or we have, uh, so many families do that whole, something they want, something they need, something to wear and something to read, that kind of idea that we just have four things under the tree for each person. So describing how Christmas works differently in every home and then empowering them to come up with a list based on the principles that work for you. And of course, having a whole lot of empathy when life doesn't feel fair. That's that's the format of the conversation that I'd recommend. What about teens, though? I mean, I guess they're a little bit older and you can sort of have these discussions with them. You can manage expectations with teens a bit more too, but then they are subject to their mates. It's like what everyone else wants and needs and PS5s or the latest sneakers or whatever it is that they're into. How do you, how do, you do that? How do you talk to them about that? So, DC, I, I love those steps that I shared, even for teenagers, but there's one more thing that I want to share, which I think is just so useful, and it's what I call giving them in fantasy what they can't have in reality. So, And, and they don't even have to be teenagers. Like, I've got a nine-year-old that desperately, desperately, desperately wants a gaming console, and we just don't have them in our family, full stop, end of story. And so giving them in fantasy what they can't have in reality sounds like this. I say to my kiddo, oh, wouldn't it be so awesome if you could have that? <laughs> or don't you just wish? Those statements, wouldn't it be awesome? don't you just wish, are doing two things. Number one, they're saying very clearly, not going to happen. But secondly, it's done with an enormous, beautiful level of empathy. Don't you just wish, wouldn't it be great? Uh, what else could we do? And I think another idea is when they want one of those things that are just too big and it doesn't fit with what our family's budget is or what our family sees Christmas as, just encourage entrepreneurship. Just say to them, you know what, that's not what Christmas is in our family, but how could we help you to get there? How can we help you to develop a business that's going to get you the, the money since we're not going to be able to pay for it ourselves? I don't know if it's just my attuned ear, but when you said, oh, that sounds great, don't you just wish? I'm like, that sounds like hopeful. Yeah, I know. I was like, do you mean there's a crack in the See, door there, Dad? We're getting his oh, tricks, door, finally. Yeah. <laughs> um, watch out for that last child, <laughs> Justin. They'll get you every time. Thanks, Justin. All right, thanks, Justin. See you soon. Straight ahead. Hey there today, fans. Sarah and... <laughs> What's my name again? Oh my God. Carl. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching our YouTube <laughs> channel, though. Subscribe now for more news, special reports and amazing Aussie stories. And Carl misbehaving, Whoa, of course. That never happens. Always happens. What's she talking about?